Welcome back to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today we're taking a look at Hextech Mayhem, a League of Legends story on the Nintendo Switch. A rhythm spin on characters from the hugely popular online experience, is it worth your time and cash or should you simply stick to that core experience? Well hit subscribe if you love the Switch, as much as we all do here, join our growing family and let's get started. <laughs> It's a story and you'll be taking on the role of SIGs in the opening moments you invade Hyman Dinger's laboratory by basically exploding a hole in the wall. You've got bombs in hand and here you establish the setting. You are out to develop the ultimate bomb. You have the idea but now you need to find the parts. And there is the setting as SIGs rampage through the neighbourhoods of Piltover and collect up what you need while Hyman Dinger tries to stand in your way. It's simple stuff given the genre, but I really enjoyed it. Sigs has a ton of character, Heimendinger makes for great opposition, and then following boss moments, there's some really strong cutscenes that play out kind of that escalation. There's also then dialogue moments during the loading screens that make for some great character building and a whole lot of jokes. <laughs> So gameplay on this comes from the team behind the exceptional Bit Trip series, a personal favourite, the most recent entry being Runner Free. Huge fan as I say and it's a hell of a licence here for them to get their hands on. For the genre though, it's nothing you haven't really seen before. Follow on screen prompts in time with the music and yeah, use the relevant input, those being jump, plummet downwards and then a throwable bomb. This translates to the A button, X button and then down on the joystick or D-pad. It's decent enough but one issue, the lack of customization in these controls. I wish I could remap them for something that feels just, you know, a little bit more intuitive to my own playstyle. Vibration then is also turned off as standard but can be turned on from the menu options. It is off-putting though for the most part I tried it, I would not suggest it. I can see why they opted to, you know, leave it off. Another thing I like to see in Rhythm Games then that we don't get here, the option to set your input to when you're reading personally the connection of the symbols on screen. It's a small thing but it definitely makes these games more accessible, instead here you're restricted to the game's expectations and not your own. As you progress then, expect these controls to gradually expand and two noticeable inclusions are holding down the jump button and the bomb button. It works fine enough once you get the timing down but expect some frustration along the way to kick things off. I was constantly seeing a jump when I wanted him to actually power up a jump. It led to a quick death and it's because I was just very slightly off with that timing. Unlike the recent runner entries then, it sacrifices the rotating world for something that's a little bit more traditional from what looks kind of like, you know, a 2.5D side-scrolling platformer, but of course it's auto-running. It's playing heavily though into a platform style, you know, runner-wise you were sliding, hitting the notes, dodging obstacles. This is SIGs actually like jumping from platform to platform, or you're going to basically run straight into a wall or hit a guard that's going to basically be, you know, a death. Where Runner would throw you back to a checkpoint though, this one actually allows you to continue. The screen goes black and white and when a note comes along, get the timing right and you're back into the game. This means though, you'll be missing a whole lot of essential collectibles. In turn, it often leads to replaying the entire level because you don't have enough to unlock that next level following. I'm going to say it now as well, look it starts relatively simple but it dials up that difficulty incredibly quickly as it sets itself over only about roughly 40 levels. A typical runner entry outside of the third one, you're going to see well over 100. You need to learn the ropes here so quickly, it really throws everything at you nearly immediately before then introducing faster tempos, tons of obstacles, boss moments, half beat notes and of course new moves. Alongside that core run as well, it even introduces the concept of freestyle mayhem, which is basically unmarked notes on screen where you'll need to collide with objects within the environment. Outside of the course of fiving the run, then you'll constantly need to be thinking about collectibles. These are gold cogs used for unlocking that next level. There's blue cogs, which are awarded based on how many gold cogs you get to unlock these mechs. Those mechs, they're used actually in the bus moments. The gameplay though does remain the same. Finally then, silver cogs and these unlock cosmetics. It is content rich though, no question about it. At this price point, 10 bucks or your regional equivalent, that is not bad at all. My first run took about four and a half hours and I'm not even close to perfecting any of these levels and I'm talking like even the early stages, the first few. 
Problems wise then, the big one, it's the frame rate, it's a rhythm game, it relies on a quick response time and it's not bad but runner is always targeted and hit 60. This is trying to hit 60 but tends to fluctuate around 50, going as low as say 45 and then occasionally up to 60. You will notice the animations stuttering slightly as that changes, that is a problem when the entire game is basically based on you hitting that specific note. Wouldn't say it really played against me too much but it's never fun to have a potential excuse at hand. Also then the game's approach to some of the item placement, the cogs, can feel a little bit cheap, it's off the notes of the game, but it's little things like the second you jump in an immediate jump to try and catch you off guard, I'm more about the skill and less about the sneaky. Finally once you're in game it's fine but the initial load time it took me about 5 minutes and these games you know they're good for I've got 10 minutes to spare let's have a quick run. This issue here kind of waiting that 5 minutes kind of defeats the idea of that because I don't want to spend basically 5 minutes waiting to have a go. Overall though look yeah you have an extremely challenging auto runner rhythm game on your hands here occasionally a few of the moves can feel awkward you know holding a button that's the same as another input can be frustrating it's very easy to make a mistake there and then that frame rate but yeah it will for sure put you on the edge of your seat there is no question about it. Graphically then I actually think it's trying to do too much, the cutscenes look incredible, the animation is top level but the actual runs it quickly escalates into multiple levels to platform across enemies, explosions, all sorts of obstacles, it's very easy to get lost in you know the self described carnage. If you look at runner 3, stunning looking game, vivid, interesting design, but when you messed up it was only on you because those notes were always very clear. Here there's so much happening on screen it can feel overwhelming distracting and yeah even hide those upcoming actions. There's a reason though most in the genre abide by the rule of being overly obvious with notes and this game it definitely makes you understand why as you lose your place you can't see a note or the transition from a note at the very top of the screen to the very bottom that is incredibly hard to keep track of. It turns things honestly just a little bit into trial and error you're going to need multiple runs to kind of get an understanding of what's coming up next and for me this should probably be more focused on what is a skill based kind of challenge. Audio finally, it's awesome, the music is fantastic, it's got a surprisingly whimsical tone to it all but it matches the characters here and the action on screen. The explosions then often fill the audio field and there's music in line consistently with a beat of your actions. The music is of course though the star of the show as it should be and it is fantastic work. So overall we have a really unique spin on the League of Legends name with a fantastic price point. That said it's not the quality of the BitTrip series that came before it and I think this is an example of well yeah too few levels meaning for newcomers to the genre it's going to feel a bit brutal there's no difficulty options on offer either but maybe for veterans I think you're probably going to enjoy that punishment. Then we get an assault on the senses on the visual front that's absolutely impressive but Sigs is probably moving around just a little bit too much, it's kind of distracting, even unfair as well as it masks the notes, that's the thing you know you should definitely be focused on. It's all topped off then with a frame rate that's not bad but it fluctuates and rhythm games they're based on the idea of immediate input response and that response here it is going to fluctuate ever so slightly. I still enjoyed it though, I'd be lying if I didn't say I did, I'll be going back and there's a ton here to conquer but I definitely like the idea of the punishment it's offering. Yes I finished a run but I'm far from done and far from 100%, that goes for even the opening levels as I said. The biggest compliment I can give it, the game plays into the idea of mayhem and few rhythm games out there will match the overwhelming sense of destruction this one offers both in a positive and negative fashion. An above average 6 out of 10 from me, I think it's a very cool use of the license and it's for sure cheap and cheerful in its price point which I absolutely respect because when you've got League of Legends in the name, you know it's attached, you could easily bump your price and they absolutely didn't. Will you be checking this one out then? Have you already? Let me know in the comments down below how you're getting on with it, how you're feeling about it. Is this one even going to be one you'll be picking up? With that then a shout out to the patrons of the channel who are just going above and beyond to support Switch Corner. It helps more than you know so thank you all so much. Then hit subscribe if you love the Switch. As much as we all do here, join our growing family and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.